are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors and took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke that covenant, even though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it in their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No one will be teaching each other uh, or saying to one another, Know your Lord, because everyone will know me. I know from the least of them the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Speak to mankind in itself. 
This holy lesson is written in the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there was staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one of them heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it each of them us hears it in our own native language? Parthian, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Palmyra, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Oh, 
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us all pray. You Spirit of Truth, who lives and breathes in all of us, you the world cannot accept or know, come to us with your divine clarity and let us understand what you want with us. Come to us with your comfort and freedom and also with your sacred longing so that we will receive from you courage to live by your strength alone and to fight for peace in this world and for hope to all people, not being satisfied before all the needs of this world are fulfilled and the day arise where everyone will know the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, in and from whom love shines towards us today and forever and ever. Amen. This Holy Gospel for Pentecost Sunday, the Feast of the Holy Spirit, is written by John the Evangelist. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Let us confess our Christian faith. We renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from then she shall come to judge the living and the dead. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Noget være mere og fred for Gud vor far og Herren Jesus Christus. Congratulations to all of you. Well, yes, I did say congratulations as we are here today celebrating the birthday of the church. Celebrating, of course, together apart. 
I did hope that we on this festival day of Pentecost would have been able to gather again for a wonderful service in our little beautiful church on the prairie. But alas, it is not the case. We are not ready yet for in-person services at Ansgar. And even if we were physically organized here for divine services in this, these COVID-19 times, well, we would still, still not be able and ready for full services here. Well, no one, or no church is ready right now, as we are not allowed, not allowed to share communion. We are not allowed to meet socially before or after the services, and we are not allowed to sing. I do not think that we are mentally, re mentally ready for this kind of amputated divine service yet. Well, maybe later, but not at the present time. However, I still hope that you with these online services will hear the word of God has spoken to you and that you will pray, pray with us and sing together apart with your fellow parishioners. I hope that you in your heart will keep these online services as a token of what is to come. What is to come when we one day will meet again Meet again for a full service. Yes, that we take this as, take them as a token, that we one day will be together, together in body, soul and spirit, with our earthly friends at church, and with the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit forever. Yes, it is for certain, it is true that we will all be together, together again here on earth, and again, of course, one day, when all this we know of is gone. But how can we know? How can we know for sure this is true? How can we know that we will meet again, which is what we want, don't we? Well. There are three ways to receive clarification of this hope. We have the pragmatic, rational, empirical way, the way of the body, the way of the reason. The brain is also part of the body, right? And we also have the way of the heart and soul through the feelings and our inner conviction that we can hold beyond what we see in the world. And finally, we have the way of the spirit. In the word of God, when we are endowed with faith in God's higher purpose of this world and our lives in it. First, first about the pragmatic, rational, empirical way, the way of the body, the way of the brain. Well, we all know from our experiences that we can be together, or, or sorry, that we could be apart. And then later, when we have been apart, we will come together again, if we wish to. It is common human knowledge that we can be together again, after a time apart. At least we know this in the times of the internet, the telephone and the jet plane. Well, just an example, immigration. Immigration does not mean as it did 80 to 100 years ago, or even before, didn't, it doesn't mean that you may never see those who stay behind. We will meet again, we will see them, those we love in the old country. And we also know from history that pandemics, they come and go. And most of us get through them alive. Our pra pragmatic, rational reason our empirical way to, 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 to describe the world tells us that most of us will get together again, 
Maybe not this Sunday or the next or the next, but maybe in a month or two or three or even more. Well, we just have to wait. We just have to wait. But then again, waiting is also just a part of life, isn't it? Another way of knowing that we will meet again is the way of the heart, the feelings, the inner moments of the soul, so to speak. Well, most of us have experienced loss. Well, all of us will for sure experience loss sooner or later in life. But we also know in our hearts that even if a loved one has passed, the memory is alive. And the conversation between the late loved one and yourself may still be ongoing. You may even see a glimpse of your late spouse sitting right there in his armchair, as he always did. But even if you don't have these visits, these visions, these conversations, you may still carry your loved ones in your heart to the end of the world. Ties of love do not break, not even by death. And the old saying, out of sight, out of mind, it's not true in relation to a loved one you cannot be together with anymore. We know this in our hearts and minds. Yes, we are certain in our feelings and in our soul that we will be together again with those we love. And maybe in this next time we are together, it will be even more fully true and good. As we simply in our soul must believe that all troubles and indifferences are vanished in the world to come. However, the most complete level of certainty is the certitude of the spirit. This stronger sense of confidence does not come from ourselves. It's not a result of innate qualities of our own. It's not a consequence of our rational thinking in body and brain, nor of our feelings and intuitions. Well, that would simply be too weak of an argument, wouldn't it? No, this kind of sureness, larger sureness, is not dependent on our own abilities or virtues. It is only, it is only bestowed upon us by the Spirit. And this is where our church comes into the picture. Well, our congregation, of course, support, we support each other in many ways. Well, of course, we support each other in rational, pragmatic ways. Well, like in how to cope with our lives, even in, especially in, in, in difficult situations. And by appealing to each of you to use your innate reason to make good decisions. Good decision, appealing to you for an innate reason, is not, of course, to tell you what to do. That would be helpless. But it's rather to help you to find yourself the best way for you in life. And of course, we can also help each other in very concrete ways could be in many things and but right now in these times of social distancing it could just be a phone call a phone call maybe to a parishioner you usually don't talk that much to just a call maybe worth your time in gold and sure we support each other in the ways of the soul we comfort each other in loss pointing out to each other all the good things in life we still have and confirming for each other that love is not broken, not even in loss. We can, of course, and we will and we do, call someone who have lost recently 
and as we support each other at funerals. And as I said, later after the funeral, and maybe even more importantly, before in the time leading up to a loss. And then when you do this, please don't discard the longing in the heart and mind of someone in loss. Don't deem them timely, inappropriate, or drawn out, even if they have been going on for many years. Well, instead, encourage him or her to see, to see the connection that is not broken, to see the ties that still binds them together in a love that never ends. Well, this may be the only way they can live on in loss. And of course, we also, all of us, need to realize that things have changed because they have changed in loss. We must then use our reason to live on to the best of our abilities. But quite often we can only do this, live on fruitfully, if we realize that the bonds of love are not fully broken, but still fully alive. However, this is not the full story. Because we also all need to find nourishment for our spiritual side. And at church we keep underlining confidently that we in our lives, more than anything else, rely on something more than just, just ourselves and our human nature. Simply speaking, that we even if we cannot find strength, cannot find courage to live, even if we feel totally alone in this world, we are not left as orphans. No. We can always believe that Jesus, Jesus will again through the Holy Spirit come to us, come to us with his certainty of faith. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, simply tells us that we shall not worry, worry as God in him by the Holy Spirit will carry us beyond what we understand and beyond what we feel. He has the higher purpose in mind, not we. And then remember that we don't have to have the all, all the correct answers. We don't even need to do everything right. It's okay if sometimes our thoughts and our lives are a complete mess. And it's not to kind of say that you're not trying, which I think we all are doing, trying to do right and to follow God's commands, the commands of love. But for sure we will not succeed in every aspect. And for sure we will not succeed if we rely solely on ourselves. Undeniably, we all live our lives in body and soul. We need to take care of body and soul. But even more than this, I believe we need God's Spirit. We need His spiritual gift of certainty in times of trial, when we fail, but also in the happy times, I believe. And this is what we celebrate today at Pentecost. We celebrate that the Holy Spirit came to the Apostle almost 2,000 years ago and gave them the certainty of faith and with that the confidence to preach, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Church of God was born on that day to our help and to the glory of God. And here at church, here at church, we will find certainty of faith. Certainty of faith in the words of God that you and I 
heard today when Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Believe this promise of the Spirit in Jesus Christ as a certainty that we can behold at all times in our belief in Jesus Christ. And this will give us the certainty that we will always meet again. Yes, for sure, we will meet again in body, soul and spirit. We will meet again in, in body and soul here at church when all those restrictions or at least more restrictions of the lockdown are eased. But most certainly we will meet again in the Spirit for Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, don't despair. Don't despair. We are, many of us, going through difficult times. But it will have an end. And we can find help in God. Therefore, I pronounce you today, to your help, encouragement and comfort, Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit on this day of Pentecost, just as the Apostle received it on that day almost 2,000 years ago, and gave them certainty. Let you gain certainty. Let the Spirit of truth and comfort carry you, enlighten you, and comfort you through these challenging times until we meet again. Happy birthday, church. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, all of you. Congratulations with your gift of the Spirit. Can't wait to see you again. Yes, because we will for sure meet again, hopefully sooner than later. Amen. Praise and thanks and eternal glory be to you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, who was and is and shall be one trine God, most praised from the beginning now and forevermore. Amen. Lord, hear our prayers. God, strengthen us with your Holy Spirit in our belief in Jesus Christ. Fill us with your love, your hope, and your faith. Give us the certainty of your ever, never-ending care for all creation. Send us your comforter, your spirit of truth, in life as in death. There's so, there's, there, there are so many people in this world who need our comfort and care. Give us strength to be there for those we know and for those we need on our way in life. Give us courage to fight all evil and for a better and more just society in action and in prayers. God, we confess to you that we do not always live up to these expectations of yours. Have mercy on us and forgive us for our failures and inadequacies. Come to us with your consolation, your solace, forgiveness and give us your peace by the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for everything you have given us in life, that we were born to life in this wonderful world and have received everything we need in body, soul and spirit from your graceful hands. Teach us to appreciate everything good, everything good in life that we have received from you, to be thankful and happy for what we have and for all those whom we share this precious place we call the earth. God, keep your church here open and welcoming to all people, and let your Holy Spirit roam among us, even now we can only meet electronically. Protect all frontline workers and those who work in health care. Give them your spirit with courage and hope in every challenging situation. 
give all parliaments, governments and all the authority and trust his position more wisdom and especially more sense of justice than we see today. Bless and keep our royal families. Grant them and us your grace, peace and blessing. And after a Christian life, eternal bliss. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And finally, let us with the apostles wish one another the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us, now and forever. Peace be with you. Amen. He has in glance no stall or stolen, lives with a common other stolen, no Spirit, let us only live in your breath, let us only find rest in your fire, let us only have a home in you. But in all this, let us live in you in a way that we become instruments who serve you by nourishing and protecting life. And let us in you become the love that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things in you, Holy Spirit, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Son, one true God, forever and ever. <laughs>
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Herren vil sine dig og bevare dig. Herren lader sit ansigt lyse over dig og være dig nådig. Herren løfte sit åsyn på dig og give dig fred. Amen. Holy 